all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to my video today uh, how are you everyone I don't know how we start this conversation but uh, you know in life that we're going through sometimes uh, the past catching up to us and uh, often in the most unusual or funny way I mean like uh, let's talk about this band uh, about the music we will start with the music in general you, you know the reason why I'm in this uh, YouTube or there is the reason why I starting the whole things is because my connection and my relation to the music and how much I love the music specifically uh, metal stuff metal song metal how do you call them everything related to metal I mean like could be dead metal trust metal any you know music in general music is fucking good I mean like I really love music and uh, it's important to me to keep in touch with the music I mean they become like my religion uh, today I can say I was kind of happy because uh, I'm only I just reached my uh, over thousand viewers. Uh, YouTube just informed me I mean like for all this time not many people like to subscribe to my video I can understand that I'm quite controversial you know I know a lot of people of a lot of people around the world like that related to my idea or that know me from what I do uh, kind of hard for people to understand like I'll tell you the truth I can I can tell you a little bit in here I mean I start the thing called genophobic entertainment which is for my love for Indonesian metal band metal music and uh, in 2009 is that uh, hang on yes it is 2009 is it yes uh, 2008 or 2009 uh, after I came out I come back from Japan uh, on the way to Australia I catch this band uh, the name band Burger Kill and uh, it's just so fucking amazing playing real good like the music just you know if you are a music lover you will understand what I'm saying I mean if you understand what I say when you listen to a band you know it doesn't matter what kind of band what kind of music but you just become like your religion it's like wow you know you just blow your mind you just affection to it you just there's something in time and moment in life like everyone I guess have that I go through that you go through that that we love music uh, you know you know how we can relate it to the bands like Pantera Slayer Machine Head all of that big band that we like or all of that band that affecting our life that connecting to us and that's how much it's like a fucking first wife when you meet the first wife first person that you love that's how I meet fucking uh, Burger Kill I mean I, I fucking listen to Pantera I'm, a, I'm a addicted to it and all that, that. but phew, Burger Kill is one of my life I mean it's like you know it's just part of my life and I was obsessed I was obsessed with the Burger Kill and uh, yeah but that time still in my space time during my space time is uh that's how we connected you know and i start messaging i have a, i have a my space account at that time under my name the, obviously as a tattooist and uh yeah i'm in touch with this person his name evans yeah uh, his, that's his stage name and which that's what we know him i don't need to tell you what his real name but he's Evans he's a guitar player he's playing guitar which is he hand we actually is is one of the person out there in my imagination or in my eyes you know what I mean I'm just I, I fucking love this guy it's one of the oh my god you know like 
But what I'm saying is, we go back to the first story again. I mean, like how I discovered Burger Kill. Long story short, I mean, love the band, like I tell you. I'm obsessed with them. I can even get a tattoo there of the skull, uh, the skull gun, what they, the, the logo and uh, the artwork of the Mighty Burger Kill. But yeah, long, sti- long story short, you know, I used to go into a lot of metal show. I used to watching a lot of metal band flying. Uh, I used to watching a lot of metal band flying, but uh, it's not. How do I explain this to you? I think you got the feeling if I understand. Uh, for how I understand this. I mean, like. My connection to Burger Kill, I feel like I am connected and involved, involved eh, with them. And uh, I used to go into day out, sound wife, every metal show that I know in Perth, WA, around Australia, everywhere I'm going, I'd love to be there. Being single life is just, you know, imagining like what you can do. You know, like so, yeah. But I swear, I saw Meshaga, I saw uh, Pantera, I saw Slayer, I saw Machine Head, I saw Slipknot, I saw all of the name, I saw Children of Bottom, oh. and Accountable. What, what else? Uh, what's that German band called? Oh my god. Anyway, too many band to name, you know. But not so many in my imagination or in my view. Or I can say, I can say it's a part equal. I mean, in flames, soil work, you name it. Carnival, you name it, you name it, you name it. Band, uh, Australian band, American band, Scandinavian band, European band, obviously, you know what I mean? But uh, the quality live stage in the live and performance I mean we're talking about Indonesian 350 million of Indonesian people you gotta be good to be good you gotta be best to be best same with the tattooing every art that Indonesian people do the competition is super fucking tight so if you wanna fucking exist if you wanna play something it can't be by the luck it's it's, it's by hard work it's a fucking you know, I keep saying this to people often and often and over and over. There is no such thing we call gifted genius or you know, got the got it in his blood. No, it's not. It's all about learning, lesson, it's all about practicing. All that magical things that we see on the people like on the performance that we really like. Trust me. They working hard to get there. Every artist that I know, every tattooist that I know, they work hard to become talented like that. They sacrifice everything. They giving everything that you can imagine. They give everything. You know, I know this one of the tattooists. His name Sotong in Bali. He's one of my brothers. He's fucking one of the best tattooists that I ever know in my whole life. I watching him working. He's just so meticulous. At the same time, he take his time, he's doing it right, and if you are an impatient person, or if you are just in the hurry of the last, please take fucking forever. But I love to get tattooed by him, you know. I'm telling you, it's a sample. I get tattooed by a lot of tattoos, good tattoos from back in the day, but he's one of the best. I let him to do me whatever the fuck he want, you know, any days, any moment. But what I'm saying is, you get a tattoo in his hand in there. He say, I sold my soul to the, uh, to the uh, I forgot what that one, that exact word, but basically, sold my soul to the tattoo god. That's what his tattoo. And uh, I understand what he mean. The sacrifice. The things that he did for the art, beyond belief, is beyond our imagination. 
and I know mm -hmm. and I believe every artist that we know, all the star, pretty much the same. To Indonesian, they don't pack in price, highly priced. And Eben himself, rest in peace, he passed away three years ago, two and a half years ago. But my point is, I'm glad to know him and I'm lucky to know him. And uh, I'm so proud for knowing him. Ah. Uh, oh shit. What's the big man doing here? But anyway, we'll go back to the same story again. This story. So in the beginning, I'm watching all of this good band, you know, the, my favorite band that they're playing. But how they play? What captured that to my imagination? I think Indonesian band, it doesn't have to be from America, from, from Sweden. You know, it, it's a long story if I'm going to say about the pride for being Indonesian, for being third world countries people. No, but I'm using all of them. I'm using all of them. And uh, I experienced a lot of funny shit in Australia in my life, being someone in the uh, Western country while I'm originally from Indonesia. You know, we can relate it. I think a lot of people related to this kind of issue. If you understand what I mean, it doesn't matter what country you are, but when you are first language is not English, it's not the same. Right? If you're born in the country like even in Canada, some French speaking language one, you still look like from a different country. I mean like let's let's say what his name, the father one. From uh, John Pit uh, Saint, Saint Pierre, what is his name? Yeah, he speak French. So, often in my time, I dreaming about seeing Indonesian band in the big day out or sun wife and not a big festival or in the live panel. So here we go. So uh, one day, I met this person. Uh, I had this idea, like, what happened if they played in, in Australia? What can we do with that? What can we do with that? So... A few times, I mean, these people like, organize this, you know, event organizers like bringing band from Europe, like they're managing it and then stuff like that, you know. We don't have to mention name by name, but yeah, one of them sound work. And uh, I mentioned to them about this Indonesian band, Indonesian metal band, and they laugh at my face. I'm telling you, it's the same management that manage. You name it, any underground metal band or death metal band themselves in general from all over the world. Matter of fact, they managed Cycroptic back in the day. So, so what I'm saying is, I tell them the story, you know. I don't know it's during the cocaine that we snort that time, so, so making us going funny. But I remember one of the comments, either from Brad or from the other guy. He say, did he bring a bamboo to the stage? I was like, what? I think it's Brad. Yeah, it's Brad. Is it Brad? Is it the other? Yeah, it's Brad. No, not the not the musician guy. The other one. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I was like, what? I was laughing. I was just like, nothing happening. I mean, so often I see, experience racism, experience all that bullshit, but uh. Not often did I actually excuse me. So, 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 sort of like, make me thinking. So, basically, we, long story short, I discovered something. All this time, I was thinking myself, like, I'm not just, I'm Australian, I'm just like everybody else in here, but because I've been in here longer than I live in Indonesia, I've been here over 30 years, so you can imagine. So when I think about that, I go home, on the way home, I keep thinking about that. How they asking me if they carry a bamboo. You know the Anklung Indonesian instrument, that's made of bamboo. So, if you understand, 
what I'm thinking is the means in the bamboo runching also we sharpening the bamboo to go to war because we don't have any weapon when we get our independent from the Dutch back in the day so if you don't understand why I say about the bamboo why like I sort of like imagining uh, or call them out their name but for what they saying but it's a big important important part uh, I start thinking and I start seeing how some actually like you know in my rock and roll metal ways like I don't see how so people look at me in the side way you know I always think like everything the same blah blah blah, blah. I'm just happy person happy chap blah 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 but then I realize racism do exist uh, what make different between each other is do some people actually really look into it like oh your color my color oh your tradition my tradition no like go I grow up in Bali being person come from that area is the racism is do fucking thick from Australian you know I'm not gonna go through one by one that's not what I am you know I mean I'm proud of being Australian and I'm proud of the Australian people and uh, I, I don't think they're racist or anything but they do some one or two people and which is probably some people that I encounter but I'm hardly I'm, well, I don't know not to my face ever received like a nasty like oh yes I did but mostly from I can handle the situation what I'm saying is so at that time my ex partner now my ex-wife and when I tell her about that she says you know and she just just say like that's xenophobia I said like excuse me oh hang on no oh, actually I went to the I went to the PDO sto store slash Nando store next door to the video store or Nando one of them but I don't remember that full detail but uh, this guy I can see that like look at me weird and shit like that and they say something about xenophobia one of the young kid so then I went home and I mentioned about that to my ex-wife I said something about xenophobic xenophobia xenophobia like what's that mean I said like Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's xenophobia. It's a fear of someone, not you. Someone look different from you. Someone not you, basically, like, not experience your culture, not experience your tribes, not experience your family-oriented situation, not very familiar with your nationalism, not familiar with your heroism. So they are xenophobia. But it's not about being racist. It's not about the color of your skin that make it different you know I mean like we're not like American they only divided by the two things they call liberal or oh, between Democrat and fucking Republican how cliche how fucking cliche so what I'm saying is the irony of the story let me make a spider the irony of the story oh there's a condensed milk there's Indonesian people with their milk we love our milk hmm there we go not gonna say it anyway so long story short this word the xenophobia stuck on me and so when we're going about Burger kill again. Long story short, I can put them one in the different story about how I start Burger Kill. But basically, I'm starting a label, which is we work with the Burger Kill person, we bring them to Australia. I can tell a different story about that later on. Then we work with another band called The Pomin. Now. This band is amazing, three piece band. Sofian, Oki, and Agus, Roy Agus. And uh, 
you know, detailing about. Also, I love this band, and then we done a tour in Australia. Now it's not where we're gonna going now. The moral of our story. Let me pump some more of the sugar in me, so I will sort of like. Now here it is. That moment break up things about this year or oh, last year oh yeah last year six months ago now holy god damn it that's pretty quick anyway i do review and i do appeal like i said they've been we sign a, we sign a record label with them with them before i take them to australia i sponsor their things and you know they come to australia we're doing this tour and uh yeah the principle is fucking amazing you know that's between us we, we love each other we love the little band that's what i thought that's what i thought but uh i got heaps of video that i make that i repeat their song that i uh reacting to it even I released their album. I released that one. If you remember in Australia, through Channel Public Record. So now, <clears throat> sad story is they break up last month, eh, about last year. The band new guitar uh, vocalist. I made a video and comment about their their breakup and how I think and what I think about it. And I did, I even review about their new album, eh, the new single or their new singer, where Sophie and Hadi, the singer, is not there anymore. And he he play guitar too. So I don't know the. The story behind their breakup, but like I say, being being their friend, being supporting the band, I can't take side and I can't criticize in that relation or taking a side of them, and then criticizing the other. No, that's not where I am. I don't want to be there. I put that on that video. I really do. Doesn't want to, you know. And I did put him in the video about it. But also at the same time, my honest opinion. What do I think about the band? What do I think about... Well, if you lost your guitar, guitarist and singer, say like fucking Pantera, you know what I mean? How do I explain this? To me, they're not the same band anymore in my eyes. Yes, they can sing the old song, or because the guitar player, the bass player become a guitar player, you know, because the singer guitar guitarist already moved out from the band. So, in my imagination, in my eyes, they're not the same band anymore. They can't, they shouldn't have the same same name. You said that promise, but hey, that's not what we are. That's not what we yeah. discussing discussing in here. What I'm saying is. I like I like the new band, and I haven't heard the new band where is uh, Sofian Hadi uh, reside now or with his other band. But the point is, what hurt me the most they didn't say it to my face. They didn't tell him my face. They asking me to taking a side or anything. But uh, I know how the singer kind of. The drummer, he's the main leader of the band, kind of reluctant to talking to me. Kind of reluctant to have a conversation with me about that. Well, obviously, I'm not that good or important enough to him. So he didn't want to tell me anything about it. Even like I say, they're doing Australian tour before and then their name is kind of it's a Burger Kill also. They're kind of growing from that tour that I did with them. 
like I say, with the Geneva Big Record, I did end up able to make to bring Indonesian band to Australia, which is I did. You know what I mean? A lot of other countless band do the same thing now. They're going walking and all that shit. But hey, you know, there's a long story. Story. There's there's a conversation from another another time, another story. But what I'm saying is in here. I start receiving a notification from YouTube about the copyright of the song from that permit that I uploaded from last couple years. I'm kind of surprised but you know like hey you know what i mean i used to be the record label so in australia you know i was about to say that i used to be our management you know but it's hard to explain that to youtube i mean like you know what i mean with the contract and shit i got a contract in there but i'm not gonna go through my file to photocopy it to print it maybe a suit maybe a suit including that including burger kill one but what i'm saying is i keep saying what i'm saying what i'm saying Punish thing, I dispute this. The YouTube complaint. Remember I told you before? Suddenly I just passed thousand subscriber. Kind of proud of that. Quite proud. A lot of people. The thing is, what upset me. I did dispute this claim by you by YouTube. I think hey, there's a mistake there sure the band doesn't care that i'm uploading i'm sure that the band doesn't mind i put you know i i put them on a reaction you know i put them on the video reaction because i want to sell their cd too or, you know like or their pd or dpd when i posting them on the youtube that's what in my imagination or that's what i thought you know i mean i, I keep saying imagination Who cares? Siri, shut up. Anyway. I do reply to uh, YouTube. About six or seven videos from that. No, hang on. But four of them the one that get complaining. It's like a YouTube copyright. I was like, what? So I did reply to YouTube, I put my dispute in there. I explain the purpose of my video is only for constructive education purpose. I never climbed that. I own that. I even I own it before, but I'm not gonna. You know, I never climbed that owning of the of the material that I posting. I mean, I'm just it is you know original content, you know. But this is it. It's the funniest shit about it, and this is the one hurt me the most. As a YouTuber, if you know, if you have a YouTube account, there's no fucking way you don't see this notification. That's that notification work as well as they are. There, that's your account. You can't miss it. You don't miss it. You know, so when I got this copyright strike, I reply to them. I give my explanation, but guess what? Because I done it before. You know, I done it with the with Mul from Mul Madness. You know, I, I he reply back. You know, as a record, you know, he uh, he email it. He released that the right for me to upload the video, which is nice. It's pretty cool. Thank you very much, Mul. But uh, come reply from YouTube to stating no the death permit still claim that is a copyright song that I don't have the right that I'm not supposed to. Put that video reaction. I want to talk about John Lee Packard reaction. 
or commenting on my YouTube channel. They reckon there's a violation of their copyright. And he know that. So if YouTube say that, so when I dispute it before, they go directly to the management of the person who managing burger. I mean, that point at that time. When the strike come to me from YouTube, when I reply to them, when I dispute it, I have to print out my name like a signature. My full name, first and last. You know who they are. So when they promise receiving the email that I send them, and I did this through YouTube, but so it's no fucking way you say you don't see it. Because it's a dispute. And I'm a pay member. I got a premium account. So they do pay attention to my email. And as them, the one that actually put that copyright strike, the disputing, the violation, do know directly they are communicating with me. True? It's a fact. It's a fact. They probably know that email is come from me. It is. They can't deny it because they see my email. And two days ago, basically they terminate my uh, payment, uh, my uh, monetize. So demonetize me, the whole channel over the death permit video. It's the irony. It's the irony. The things that it for. I got in the phone in there. I'm not gonna say you know. Message from uh, Sophia Hadi. He explained he doesn't understand anything like that. But he know. They do managing managing the video. They do own the channel, and they do own that. The song in there, the copyright. They go to them, but it just. Morally, it's wrong for them to do it to me. Especially most of the song that on the violation or uh, copyright strike with Sophie and Hadi singing on it, the old singer from Evil Rise album and uh, the, the last one. I don't even know what to say that one. But with the new singer, not a problem. Video, no problem. There's no problem with that. So you tell me. So let's think. What's going on in here? I don't point the finger to the promise, But the proof is in there. The proof is, is in there. If you say you don't see my email, bullshit. Because there's a proof there that you received my email. And then you still accuse me for copyright violation. Well, you get your name, who you are now as a band. It's coming from my hard work too. Like I say, we done Australian tour. The only Indonesian band that doing Australian tour in the history of metal Indonesia I'm not gonna lie that I don't feel betray I'm not gonna lie not to saying I do have some involvement to get their name that big nowadays I'm working hard for it they are recognized worldwide because of fucking my hard work too you know I did this tour before them. You know? But what I'm saying is, it's just not nice. Not nice. 
Pero disappointed. Pero disappointed. Uh, is a greed or is a internal? I don't know. I can't say. I don't know what to say. I can say it's a greed or whatever. But I don't know. What are, what are they doing in this? Sabotaging their own self. I mean, like, for you people that are usually watching my video and subscribe to me, now you don't have, you know, you don't see that moment anymore from my video. That's not nice if you think about it. But that's what's happening. That's what's happening in here. I'm sorry. I was harsh in there. I'm not just point finger, but I point my middle finger to that point over that situation. I lost my respect. It's not the same because of that. I warned you guys. I warned you that point before. I told you. It's nothing to do with me. I love you guys. To you too, Roy. I never tried to cut our friendship or anything like that. You're just too big maybe, you don't want to talk to me? Fine, that's fine. It's okay, I understand that. You're artist, big artist now. I understand that. You know, it's just my perception over you is a bit different now. I don't look at you the same anymore, sorry. For you too, okay, you know. Whoever, whoever that know, you guys know what's going on. That moment know what's going on. He fucking know what's going on. I reached out to you many times too about the, this. What did I get respond from you guys? Pack all. So all the job that I did. I don't regret anything that I did in the past doing that. But at the same time, it's going in the gutter. I say pack you too guys. You know? I don't like it how you guys are doing it to me. It's a quite upsetting me actually. Never thought about that. That you guys do and the reason why they get monetized by YouTube because of your video. It's right from you guys. Don't say you don't know it. You don't know it. In Indonesia we go we go, we have the saying like a uh, kura kura ninja or cheese ninja turtle. But is this uh it's a word playing kura kura ninja is like what kind of bullshit that they're gonna fucking that's what that mean. If you wanna know in in English, if they say kura kura ninja or like a ninja turtle, yes, the bullshit, the excuse, the you know, the answer to it, we call it kura kura ninja, which is not gonna answer us with bullshit. I'm not the famous person in here. I'm not the famous band. I know you guys gonna we win over this. I know that probably doesn't you know it's not gonna lose fucking sleep or anything over that my video. No, it doesn't. But I just warn you if you are in the band in this day and age, you be careful. The label behind ya or the people that are solely the they have a record label behind ya, if you left them. It's like a fucking relationship. They will try anything to defame you, obviously. I don't know if they, they try to defame fucking uh, Sophie and Hadi, but that's what that feel like. You know? So, yeah. We will continue next time, and thank you very much for watching the video. If you get to this, this part, obviously, you been listening and uh, two other Indonesian metal band that are doing it underground pack the label do it yourself DIY in this day and age yeah all the best miss you guys and uh, I can't wait until I go back to Indonesia again like what Evan keeps saying back in the day I'm gonna use him that price keep smoking metal engine fuck yeah Indonesian metal fucking rule rest in peace Evan